feel like China has always been a pretty interesting topic for me, especially since I'm, you know, from Chinese heritage. But it's also a pretty relevant, like, country in terms of, like, world power and politics and all that, which is also why it's a pretty touchy subject in, like, American politics, I guess. Uh, but all terms of that, I don't really care about present politics, or at least it would be messy to get involved in present politics, which is why today I'm going more into history politics, which aren't really as relevant anymore. And basically, it all started when, you know, a few weeks back, I asked my dad about, like, the Taiwan situation, because I was curious. I was wondering why, for one, like, why there was this whole conflict with Taiwan, why China's, like, for one, fighting for, like, this random island, and then why, like, it's, how that even happened in the first place, why it's relevant. And basically, he gave this, like, one hour long story that I was only, like, mentally present for, like, 6% of it. But I got the gist of the story, which, long story short, was there was a war in China, and then uh, the losers, they lost the war, but they couldn't, they don't know how to lose properly, so they just ran to the island, which is Taiwan, and then now, you know, China, the two islands are like China, but they're under separate leadership, so, you know, mainland China is like trying to get Taiwan back because they're the losers that lost the war like a while back, but, you know, the mainland China, or the freaking Taiwan, island under different leadership is now you know friends with a few people so if mainland china mainland china tries to attack taiwan then you know taiwan can call in the homies and then they can actually fight back so taiwan is now just there under different leadership and not technically part of mainland china i guess but in reality they're both china just like two parties i guess but that's the long story short that my dad explained i wasn't actually zoned in like for most of that so the other day when I was in the library, I was stuck in the library for an hour and I decided I'd read a book. So I managed to stumble upon the Chinese history section, or freaking Asia history section, by complete accident. And then I saw a book on China, so I decided to read it. And I happened to, it happened to be the exact same story that my dad told, just with a lot more detail. So I'm going to remember those details by telling a story about all of them. Basically, all way, way back when, like, I don't know what's a good reference point for time. Uh when cars weren't invented you know the old time uh there was a point where china was like extremely shambles in terms of like wealth and economy and this was a time where they were reliant mostly on peasants to do like freaking farm work and then you know the peasants do work and then they pay all their like products and like wealth to up the funnel to like upper class so there's like the upper class of like emperors and like the freaking dynasty or all that they are taking all the wealth so basically their economy is shambles they're main population is all peasants and it's all like really trash apparently at that time japan was actually like getting really good and actually like better than china which is hard for me to grasp my head around for some reason but basically china was pretty bad and then through this chaos uh there was a guy who came out his name was like sun something not sun Tzu, the auto war guy it was like a sun something and he made these like principles to for the one for the people to follow just to like you know, bring the country out of its shambles. It's like the equivalent of America's Great Depression. Like, someone had to step in and, like, try to, like, fix everything. So this sun guy, he tried to come in and fix everything. His first step was to make these three principles. The first principle was nationalism, just being, like, a crazy patriot. Second principle was, uh, what do I recall? Democracy. Democracy was it because, you know, the freaking current system was really corrupt and messed up. And the third principle is i forgot it which is why i'm gonna look it up sun's three principles i'm pretty sure it was just like be a good person no i don't think it's that simple Na democracy nationalism and people's livelihood oh it was something about like happiness what was his name san min zu yi the three principles of the people yeah so it's democracy nationalism and then people's livelihood i think that was just like happiness like live to enjoy life or something but basically he made these three principles and made this like party i guess you could call it that like organizes all that and it's like the new new revolution of you know them being like smart and like trying to change everything make it democracy nationalism and like you know happiness it's a big change i guess in china but uh as that went on for a while at some point, this other guy comes around. Uh, his name's Mao Zedong. I've got the accent on that guy. Uh, he's much more known because he's the one that actually won the war. Um, but he came and he made the communist, the Chinese Communist Party, 
which is what's currently being used because he won the war. But basically, he made the Communist Party with the hope, I don't know, he's just like focusing on communism, I guess. He's basically just like that communism ideal, which is like everyone work together, make one nation, I guess. I, I, don't, I don't actually know, I already forgot the book but in detail. But basically, he made the Communist Party, uh, and then at some point, the Communist Party had conflicts with this the Sun Guys Party, which is, I'm going to call like, the democratic it's because communism and democracy are two forms of government so i guess it, it makes sense that they would have conflict but um if i recall correctly this Mao Zedong and his little small gang of communists uh they were like trying to do like stuff they were trying to make some change but then at some point you know the sun guy he didn't like them he didn't like that change because communism so he fought back yeah he fought a he, like freaking destroyed them so they like ran away they retreated to like some other places and then from there son the sun party leader guy had two options he had three issues on his mind one was the crippled economy two was japanese forces freaking invading uh china because this is around the time of world war ii where china was fighting japan while america was fighting germany and all that good stuff but i actually didn't know about the whole china japan or i knew they were like enemies but i didn't actually like pay attention to like actual wars that were happening but japan was like invading china or at least in like minor attempts to i guess but uh the sun guy had to pay attention to the economy japan's invasions and then also just completely wiping out the communist party and he believed that he couldn't do the first two tasks without completing the third task so his first priority was to wipe out the communist party so he uh went back you know across china and he like swept the freaking building he swept the whole country for like the communists and like try to like wipe them out um and through this process the communists you know got found and they retreated again to like freaking some far place i guess somewhere where they didn't get hunted down but in that situation when the communists were like also in shambles and getting cornered uh they nominated Mao Zedong as the p military political uh chief guy he was like the equivalent of george washington i guess but he's the military chief police guy or he's just like controls military in the communist party and with that i think their first plan the first thing that they did was they decided that they hate japan so the communist party started like doing anti-japan uh movement so that's actually like really patriotic because anti-japan is pro-china because japan is anti-china anti so basically he made this really patriotic move to be against japan and started like fighting against japan so that's his like uh position as the communist so then the sun guys uh freaking followers and adversaries people freaking like all his people they looked at the communist party and they're like wait, wait wait we're fighting the communists but the communists are also helping us by fighting japan so like they should they should be friends so they apparently the sun guy sun i keep saying sun because i don't know his full name but i'm not gonna bother saying it the sun guy he actually went to like one of the towns and then he got like caught by his own people his own people like revolted against him and like forced him to make an alliance with the communist party so they could like both defeat japan together and that's what they did they made an alliance and they both just like worked together to get japan sweeped out and that was world war ii when china was fighting japan at least that's what i'm pretty sure world war ii was but when they after a while when you know, everyone was fighting uh when all the fighting was over uh they wiped out japan you know they got them out of their land so China was back to being China, and then the two parties went from being alliance back to fighting each other because, you know, they're still not the same. They gotta, you know, figure out who's the winner. And somehow, uh, there's probably more details, but I don't recall. Uh, somehow, through this whole conflict with Japan, uh, the Communist Party actually came out stronger. Uh, maybe not stronger than the Sun Party, but um, they came out substantially stronger than they were before the anti Japan, like, wars. So. In the end, after Japan was defeated, the Communist Party was like way stronger, like just more strong. And then, you know, the Sun Democracy Party is, you know, also just there. But in the end, it was more even, I guess. So the fighting, you know, continued. And then at some point, I think that at some point, the Sun Democracy Party just slowly started collapsing. And I think I read the main key from that was because of how they treated the general population, which is like mostly peasants. They had this like policy to like freaking beat their peasants for some reason and then the communist party had the policy to like 
be nice to the peasants, help them out with their daily work, you know, be great patriots or something. I don't even know why they're being more patriotic than the party that's main principle is patriotism. But I somehow through the process, I just know for a fact that, or at least in the book, it said the son, you know, Democracy Party guy, he was being really bad to the people. Therefore, the people kind of hate him. And then the Mao Zedong, his communist party, they're being really nice to the people. So the people love him and support him. So with all the support on the communist party side, they successfully just like go through and swipe clean the Sun Democracy Party because you know they have all the support of the people they have every advantage there is to have so from there that's basically all it is to it the Communist Party wins and then the uh, what's it called the Sun Democracy Party guy he loses and his whole party group they lose but they don't you know take loss very easily so instead they retreat they retreat to the island which is modern-day Taiwan and now they just chill there and there's a separate they're still like a different type of people and it makes sense now that i think about it because taiwan is under that leadership that party which is a democratic party i do i don't know if i'm using the terms correctly but they're i'm pretty sure they're democratic which makes sense that they're uh, alliance with america because you know usa is also democratic so it makes sense in the end that taiwan is alliance with America and it also makes sense now to me after I read the book and heard my dad's story that China and Taiwan have that beef and that like conflict because obviously China is a different form of like government I guess from Taiwan and then they never properly solved it because Taiwan or those like the Democrat Party couldn't take a loss or wait I keep saying Democrat democracy democracy the democracy people couldn't take a loss uh, so, you know, they were just like taking, they just retreated and then they were just two separate parties. Basically, moral, the end of the story is, you know, uh, the Communist Party, they win and now they're still there to this day. I'm pretty sure the Communist, Chinese Communist Party, that's still what it is. Mao Zedong, you know, that guy old, um, you know, back in like 1960s or something. That was when that all that good stuff happened. I don't think he's alive anymore. I'm uh, Probably not if I'm being... Uh, yeah, he's definitely not alive. But, um, yeah, that's all there is to it. Um, that's basically a clarification to my confusion when I was wondering about, like, Taiwan and all that good stuff. But it all makes a lot more sense now, considering all that. But maybe, you know, I need to remember this in case I forget one day and then I have to come back and remember why exactly is China and Taiwan so mad at each other. But anyways, that's all it is. It is like a little Chinese history lesson because I was bored.